what's going on you guys Foster here and i am back with another video in today's video i'll be doing an in-depth olaf jungle guide olaf won the poll as you can see right now uh, so here we are doing an olaf guide olaf currently is a very strong champion he has a dominant early game pressure he has really good clear speed and if you can push through a game with olaf like really play to your to your strength and play aggressive then you there's almost no getting behind on this champion unless you get really screwed over by your team basically so i would highly recommend you try it out at least he's very strong and can get you a lot of wins played properly so on the play properly part let's get right into the runes so for the runes on olaf it's pretty much just conqueror is the best bet since this will give you the sustain whilst also giving you just a really good amount of 1v1 potential and basically meaning that you will not be able to lose any 1v1 situation against most champions. Now going from there, you have the Triumph. This is very nice for sustain purposes. Olaf, like in fights, in, in, just in general, gets really strong the lower HP he gets. So significance of missing health becomes a lot more like prominent here. And Triumph is going to help you out in sustaining a lot. Now going from there, you have the Tenacity, which is literally useless. Because you have your ultimate, and if you just time your ultimate properly, then this is just, like, you don't need it. So just get the attack speed. You can even get the bloodline as well for more lifesteal if you want. But that's completely up to you. I would just go with the attack speed, since it will provide you with a better, um, like, dueling potential, especially, like, earlier on. This is just a little bit better for more auto attacks. Now, going from there again, Olaf thrives on lower HP, so synergizes really well with last stand, and that's just what you want to get. Now, for the secondary tree here, you have two options, really. You have the Inspiration tree, which I would recommend about 95% of games, and that's a combination of Magical Footwear and Approach Velocity. Now, Magical Footwear is really good here because, one, it, you don't have to buy your boots, but two, also getting those boots will give you an extra 10 move speed, which move speed is really key on Olaf because... It's like if the enemy can kite you, that's the only way you can really lose that 1v1 situation. And that's this kind of counteracts that. Also, for that same reason, you have approach velocity. Because the moment you land an axe, you run at them with 15% more move speed. And you can pick up your next axe and your next axe. Pretty much guaranteeing that they're not going to get away from you. So that's really why approach is the best one to get. And this rune is really like, yeah, top tier for Olaf. Now the other option here is if the enemy team is more dual heavy and really wants to be up front in your face fighting from a very early stage, then getting something like Bone Plating and Revitalize can really just up the potential to 1v1 those types of champions or those types of team comps. Now, this usually doesn't happen because in most cases, um, Olaf has the advantage, and also people are very, very mobile these days, so a very mobile enemy team requires you pretty much to have approach and yeah, so if the enemy team is basically just a bunch of champions that can't really get away from you and wants to duel you in your face, then pick this. If not, then just get this, and which is going to be the case most of the time. Now for this option right here, you just want to get double adaptive force really simply because you have built in attack speed from your W and just the adaptive force is going to help more in your jungle clear when it comes to your axes. So your axe is going to do more damage and every time you like pretty much pick up your axe and throw it again, that's just going to stack up by a good amount and it's going to be the best for your clear speed olaf's full clear usually is done at the same speed karthus does it maybe even a little bit faster actually since uh, karthus needs to get going with a couple levels but it's usually done about 250 and you're done with your full clear no problem so that's really there and yeah so that's it for the runes if you guys have any questions on the runes make sure to put those in the comments below and i'll get right into the item build now Alright, so for the item build, we have the um, Hunter's Machete start with a refillable potion. Uh, you want to start Hunter's Machete. You might think, why don't you start with the Talisman, right? Because you're throwing so many axes. Now, usually with Olaf, not usually, pretty much every single game, you just want to start on your blue buff. Your clear is so insanely fast. Plus, nobody is actually going to really be able to 1v1 you early on. So if you place a defensive ward with that early 50 second ward, you can easily just place the ward and know instantly what the enemy is going to do. Because so, the only chance the enemy really has of invading you is going from their buff camp to your buff camp pretty much instantly. And if you can ward against that, then you have no problems with Olaf at all. Now, this will help you a lot in single target camps. This will speed up doing the um, 
red, blue, and Gromp by a massive amount, your Axis will pretty much just AoE down the rest of the camps. And that's really the synergy there. So with the blue buff and the mana sustain, you can easily afford to do this. And there's no problems. Now again, the trinket early on. Place this at about 50 seconds and reset. And get the red trinket for pressure there to know if you're walking over wards or not. This is going to help a lot because this will show you the pathing of the enemy jungler. If you place it aggressively or defensively for the same matter. And you can adapt to your like you can adapt your jungle here to whatever the enemy jungler does based on that vision. Now the, the trinket here allows you to play aggressive, like let's say invade the enemy's top side if they're starting on their bot side or whatever. And you can just really clear through it really easily because Olaf has such a quick clear speed. You can pretty much do all three of his top side camps whilst he clears his bot side still and you will have no problems whatsoever. Now the only one that might contest you on that clear speed would be Karthus, but by the time he gets like to his um like gets to you if you make such a play, it will already be too late, really. So that's, yeah, that's really there. Now, going from here, the main smite you want to get on Olaf is the red smite. Now, you might think, why not blue smite? Well, with approach velocity, you do not need blue smite. Landing an axe is basically like blue smiting them at that point, because they're going to get slow, you're going to get a move speed boost, and you're fine. The main thing here is that Skirmisher is going to make it impossible for any enemy to really want to be one you, because you're Olaf, you're scary as hell. And with Red Smite extra additional uh, bullshit added to that, let's say, you're never really going to lose that. Uh, the main Smite option for Olaf is the Cinder Hulk. Uh, you might think, why not Warrior? Well, Warrior makes you way too squishy. You can go Warrior if you're like really far ahead, but usually just going Cinder Hulk is way better because it makes you tankier. You don't have a lack of damage by any means. You do have true damage from your E already as well, so just having this is really like the best bet here now moving on from that to the boots the boots on olaf is pretty much a ninja taba you do not need mercury traps because you have your ultimate you just gotta time that ultimate properly at the moment you need it and you will not be able to get cc'd so just ninja taba for the most damage reduction there and moving on from this the main item on olaf is black cleaver for the damage like you can easily stack this black cleaver up your auto attacks are really fast your axis will Help shred the armor as well, and this will just be like one view on the best situation for you. So that's really like yeah, just just get this. This will also help with CDR, which is really really nice. Getting those ultimate back and overall just a really good item for the phage effect as well to not be able to get kited. So in general, this has everything you could possibly want, and that's why it really is there. Now going on from there, it's pretty much just tank items really that are based on the enemy team so you have like um spirit visage could be very very good ga sterex stone plate as well actually those types of items also another thing that you can definitely pick up is the executioner's calling for the healing reduction into healing enemy teams so let's say you're facing a cane a vladimir stuff like that getting this executioner's calling is core you can even pick it up before like before finishing your cleaver. Just this item is high value on Olaf because you can easily get it to somebody if you get the axe and it's going to be very valuable. So that's definitely something I do want to have set. Now going from here, again, the armor items in the form of the Guardian Angel. The Thorn Mill is good. The um, random ones can still be good as well. And to crit stuff, you just need to get stone plate. You can get... You can, Get stuff based on the enemy team quite quite easily so there's really no issues there magic resist wise probably spirit visage would be best because you as all have tried to sustain based on like healing quite a bit so this synergizes really well with that however if the enemy team has the damage output that would affect adaptive helmet then this of course becomes a better tank item and really that honestly also i do want to mention this new devs dance simply because the 30 armor and 30 magic resist from this, and also the like 1v1 potential you'd have with this, makes this a pretty good 6th or 5th or 6th item on Olaf, actually. Just, one like, the sustain is immense. That's really it. So if you can set a build together like this, for example, you can go Spirit Visage. After this, you would have ninjas for some armor, so you can opt to go for magic resist a little bit sooner. Unless, of course, they are more focused towards AD damage at that point. Then you can pick, th pick up Thormel as well. Thormel is just one of those items that's really good. 
Now you can also go for a Guardian Angel. You can even go for a more damage heavy setup if you're really snowballing and you do need that damage. Then you can also pick up the item Sterex right here after your Black Cleaver. This is going to make you pretty tanky as well, but also giving you a lot of extra damage based on it as well. And going from here, you can still pick up like a Guardian Angel. This would be a way more damage heavy setup. And this would also be a setup where you could have gone through, for example, the Warrior in chat, simply because that would have um, kind of pushed through more damage and more damage and this is going to be a higher damage output thing this is the only something you can afford if you either have a really big lead or if you have just an incredible tank on top lane already that you do not need to be as tanky to be able to frontline if you know what i mean so there's only then you would be able to afford to go for something like this in any other situation it's really more of a tanky item type of situation so go for something like this setup right here. You will do plenty of damage. There's really nothing to worry about. Your E does a really, really good amount of true damage. And just keep landing those axes and those auto attacks. Black Cleaver and Conquer are going to get just going to ramp up. The damage is going to kick in and Squishies are going to die. So there's really no problems there. And that's really it for the build. So something like a full build could look like this. Full build could even look like, um, I don't know, this could work or... The Guardian Angel here could be a thing as well. It just really depends. You can also go for like a stone plate. Just adapt to the enemy team as best as you can. So yeah, if you guys have any questions on this build, please make sure to put those questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you guys have enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button as well. And yeah, let's just get right into the gameplay section now. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I am playing Olaf, of course, into a Karthus. Now for Olaf, this really isn't that bad, bad of a matchup since your clear speed is equaling Karthus, so you should be fine on that front. However, there are a few things you can do against Karthus as Olaf, which you'll see me do this game. And this is something I'd recommend you to do with Olaf if you know the enemy jungler is, for example, starting on the other side, because you can easily sweep them. And that's something you can definitely do to get a massive lead. This will be way more effective in lower elos, but uh, yeah, you'll see it. Now here we're going for an invade. I'm personally very much not a fan of invading whatsoever, because this means that I don't really have the room to place my ward down, reset for a sweeping trinket, which is by far the better play. Because if you were to place an early ward, let's say here, or maybe on the red buff, or even defensive, you could play it, place it like defensive, even though that's not really necessary against the Karthus. But I could like place it here to see if he were to go for a hit from like his bot side to my bot side. That could be a play that I could counter with a ward. If you reset at about 50-ish seconds, then you can reset for the red trinket. And then the red trinket will allow you to go for invades a lot easier and also go for ganks, knowing that there are wards or not. Because if you were to run in and die because of a ward, then that would be just really awkward. So we kind of get a zone here, I guess. I just walk away. Galio is pretty much forced to flash out, which isn't ideal there. And now I'm just going to go and start my blue buff. Now for Olaf, you can start either, but starting blue buff is by far the best choice because this will give you the fastest possible clear speed. A usual route for Olaf looks something like a full clear because you do your full clear so fast. You'll finish it at about 2 minutes, 50-ish seconds. Thereabouts, you'll be hitting level 4. And then you can easily contest the Scuttle, especially against the Karthus. But usually Olaf wins about, about every single 1v1 Olaf should win it. Uh, yeah, he's just really, really good at 1v1, especially early game. He has so much lifesteal and damage that, yeah. So the trick when it comes to clearing here is you want to throw your X. Step, like, step back, throw your X, and step forward into your X there. And every time, it's a really quick repeat. Pretty much completely refreshes the cooldown of your Q, and here you're going to see me go for the play, which I mentioned. Now, I know that Karthus is going to start his blue buff, and this is for this reason. I still see him on his blue buff here as well, actually, so this makes it an even easier thing. So I'm just going to go and opt to go here and to stake his top side. Now, apparently, <laughs> they have this warded, which is something now I cannot check simply because I didn't reset for my red trinket. If I had my red trinket here, usually, then... I would just have Red Trinket and then walked in, see if there's a ward. If there's a ward, then, well, that's a little bit unlucky, I guess. And I just clear the ward and then I can walk away because at that point, uh, the, like, I just have to go back to clearing my camps. So right here, I'd at this point only no realized the moment Zed walked up, 
that that it was warded. I didn't really see the set going out of lane because I know that set has a really bad time against Gangplank, so he might just be zoned out uh, at about here, and maybe he's just barely out of vision. So I wasn't expecting it from set. But the moment this Z started walking, there's really not much I could do anymore. If I were to have a 1v1 against the Z, I would probably win it, simply because I'm Olaf. But in this case, they get like a 3-man collapse on me, which isn't that great for me. Now, some of you th guys might think, well, you lose a lot of power with this. This is something you really don't have to worry too much about it. You can easily recover from it, especially with Olaf, because you have such a quick clear. And that's also what is going to just is, like happen this game. I'm just going to go and opt to clear whatever I can. I am going to get a little bit low on mana simply because I do not have the Hunter's Talisman yet. I start with the Hunter's Machete, so I will not have to sustain without blue buff. And in this case, going for that invade this specific game was a little bit awkward. Now this, to prevent all this, you can literally just full clear on Olaf. It's most of the time just the best play anyway because you do it so fast. So usually I'd recommend that, but if you want to try to go for like an invade stuff style like that, where you know the enemy is going to start on their blue, then the war trick would work for you and you could easily do that with red trinket now this game i died for it not having red trinket and yeah that's a bit awkward so i'm really gonna just opt for the skull here i have a bard on my bot lane which is really really nice because that just means that i can go for the tunnel here or just for a play here in general but bard tunnels make this a really easy gank so i'm definitely going to try to opt for a bot lane also with ash and bard they do have a good amount of lockdown which makes this an easier way to gank this lane like regardless now Triss is a little bit hard to gank because of her jump, but Sona it becomes pretty easy. And yeah, so right here, I'm just chilling. Like they are gonna walk up. I pretty much come in at the perfect time because they were gonna go aggressive on my Ash, which is really good timing for me. Because right here I could just walk up, hit the Trist. I barely didn't walk enough, like down enough to get my axe back, but my axe is on a low enough cooldown to where this guy is just gonna die anyway. So that was really, really good for me there. That kind of puts me back into a good position in this game after dying. And just the gank timing there was really, really nice. Now, all at this point I want to do is... Um, I'm just going to go back to the camp that I know is going to be up. Like, this camp is going to spawn. And this camp is still up. Uh, for my top side, there's really not much I know. Simply because if you go back here a little bit... And I'll show you this as well. This is also why I'm not, like, walking towards Grom. And then full clearing down, for example. It's really just about right here is when you see it. So watch mid lane right now. This guy comes walking from this direction. Which means that he could have just like cleared his camps and ran like this. But he could have also taken both my topside camps. So for me, knowing that he walked from this direction, there would be no reason for me to then walk to my Gromp. Only to then find out that it would be down or not. So what I do is I'm going to go for the camp that would respawn here. And then clear upwards because by that time I have a high chance that my wolves and, and or gromp would have respawned by the time I get there. Which means that the experience value of that camp is still going to be increased and I would not have wasted my time um, trying to walk somewhere that isn't up. So I'm just going to respect the fact that the Karthus actually took my camp there or took my camps there. And I'm just going to go and clear it from bottom side up. So again here for this situation. As you see right here just walking towards the bot side. I now do have my Hunter's Talisman, so my mana sustain is going to be a lot better. As Olaf, though, if you don't have blue buff, you want to be a little bit more sparing with your axes. So you want to make sure that you just don't keep spamming it, because then you're going to get out of mana really, really fast, and you're going to need that mana to do ganks, or just the one if you want the enemy jungler. Now, in this specific case, as you can see, with the vision control we have, we have a pink ward here, which is really good. We have a uh, pink ward here, or control ward, I guess, rather. So we know that I know that this isn't warded, and so that leaves me with one thing to do, and that's why I have Sweeper and also a Control Ward if I need it. I can sweep this, and if this isn't warded, this gank is going to be free again. Because all Bard has to do is walk up, uh, pretend he's going to go for like his like uh, passive uh, thingies, like those things. And he just portals over, and I get a free gank. So I just see it, this wasn't warded because of my Sweeping Trinket, and as you can see right here with the portal... And this also not being warded. They stand a little bit too far forward. Sona has an easy kill because she has no mobility and no flash. And we just forced their summoners earlier anyway. So right here, I initially wanted to go for Sona. But the bar yeah, didn't throw her stun instantly. So I was like, uh, are we going for Tristan? No, Trist jumps. He still lands a very nice stun on the Tristana and Sona. So we get a kill on Trist here. And Sona survives. So that's honestly, it's not too bad. The Sona surviving is fine. 
So I'm right there just throwing a Q to push that out as fast as possible. And off of getting the kill there, we should have been rushing the dragon. Now, we should have done this a little bit faster. I should have held to push the wave just a couple seconds faster because then we would have actually had enough damage. Now, at this point, I'm pretty much the only one hitting Drake. Uh, Ash did like one auto attack here. And even if I die for this dragon, I would still take that and it would still be worth it for me. We do pick the dragon up. So that's really, really good there. And right here, I mean, I just die. There's really not much I can do. So this wasn't an ideal fight for us. We were a little bit slow on doing the Drake there. Also, Karthus already hit level 6, which wasn't that great for us either. But just next time, if I do, would do this again, I would just push the Bolt Wave out just a bit faster there. Actually, just throw like two, two axes. Even if I take the wave, just throw the axes so your like lanes can rotate a little bit faster, which would have like made a difference, a small difference in getting the dragon there and maybe getting out because it was pretty close now you, you might also say that in that case you should not be going for dragon but i was a little bit skeptical as the part like to the fact that the Carthus would just do the dragon the moment i would have backed out of bot lane and i don't really prefer giving up an infernal if i have the choice even if i would have to die for it so yeah, that's what I'm really going to go for there. I'm just going to pick up the Infernal, pick up the Drake Soul. And the Karthus is now a little bit ahead of me. Simply because of that early game play that I made. If I would have just full cleared, I would have been equal in farm or not like even higher in farm. So just, if that's it's a more consistent play, I got caught here, which is fine. But now I just have to play the smart game and catch up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to still pray, uh, press the Karthus for all his camps. So just pressing Karthus, it doesn't matter if you're a level lower or like two levels lower on Olaf. Because Olaf into Karthus, you are always going to win that 1v1 no matter what. Like there is next to no reason why you should be losing that. Because Karthus has no way of stopping you. And Ol he is also very squishy. So he cannot slow you. He cannot uh, really do enough damage back to you before he dies. So it's really, really easy to just do that. Now as you saw, like the pressure part of this is me... Still gonna contest his red buff, still gonna go for camps in his jungle because he should not be able to free farm. Like as Olaf, you should not let a lot of junglers free farm because you just have so much damage and pressure on them. Now this could backfire on you, in, especially towards lower elos, simply because your laners might not react and the enemy laners might react. So it's gonna be a 3v1 situation. Which is not that ideal, but yeah, that, that would just be unfortunate. You could have that happen like once and then learn from it and then just kind of try to either avoid that from happening or just gank a lane and then invade. That could also work. So right here, I'm just going to take whatever camps I can from the Karthus. There's really not much he can do to contest me on this one, so that's really, really good there. So we see a mid lane. I, I see a mid lane right here. And I know that he he wants to go for his top side. So he, this in his mind, his red is still up. And this is still up as well. So he's going to walk about here somewhere. So all I really have to do is like walk like this. Or maybe like this to cut him off. As you can see, I see him right there now. Initially, I was just waiting in this brush for him to go towards his red. Because if he would have walked like this back and just cleared his camp, he would have already done it by now. And then he would have just been walking up towards this direction. And then the moment he walked past here, I would have just gone all in on him and would have gotten the kill, no problem. So here I see him walking, pathing this way. I get a free axe. The moment I saw him pathing upwards, I'm just going to throw my axe. And the moment I land that one axe, he flashes over the wall. I flash after him and get a free kill. That gives me a shutdown. And apparently Karthus uh, might have all that fort that one. I don't know or whatever. But that gives me the kill, gives me his Raptor Camp and also gives me the Rift Herald. Now this is the key aspect here, like as you saw earlier, I was behind because of the aggressive play I tried to make and I got caught on that one. But from still putting the aggression and putting the pressure on the Karthus because he should not be able to do anything against an Olaf. And that's also why Olaf is a really, really good pick on the Karthus. You can just keep pressuring him, keep taking camps that he like, either you can contest him on it or you can just snipe the camps away from him because you pretty much clear your jungle as fast as he does. So there's really no issues there. Now with this Rift Herald and my entire jungle being up, I definitely want to look towards uh, going for my jungle camps. Now in this situation again, I was initially opting to just go for a clear upwards. But as you can see with the vision control my bolt lane has set down, there's really no reason for me not to take this gank. Because there's vision here and vision here. And it's true vision, so you, don't, you know it's not warded. So I might as well at this rate just go and gank again the same way with Bard. Go as the wall, Ash hits the arrow. 
Now, a little bit annoying here is that it's a very, very far back. So I'm just going to, at this point, commit to it. I was already in way too deep. So I'm just going to commit there. And the thing about Olaf is usually committing to the play and actually going for it like really, really heavily is the best play. Now, also another good thing about this is if you notice the map, we have the set on top lane. We have the Karthus on top lane as well. So we know for a fact that Karthus cannot be here. So this allows us to dive as well. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So this allows you to dive. So this, this play is pretty much made possible by the fact that this guy was in mid lane right here. So he cannot react that fast. And then we have the Karthus somewhere topside and set is topside as well without teleport. So the only two players it's going to be is these two. And it's definitely going to be a 2v3. Now they do have other summoners, which they I'm pretty sure they will blow it here anyway. And with my ultimate, I can dodge Trist ult and Sona ult. So I'm just definitely going to get a kill on someone. And right here, as you can see, I just finished them off. Now, what I'm doing right now is making sure that I use my Rift Herald recall. Because the Z, or sorry, the Z, Z and Z, Jesus Christ. But the Z is missing from mid lane. And I cannot um, allow him to catch me. And right here, he was right there, but he could have also just gone for me since I was worth more gold. But he probably realized that I had the Rift Herald or Eye of the Herald, so he'd never catch me. So this Ash kind of, I guess, overextended on this one. Maybe she didn't see him move. And she dies for it, I think. Yeah. But yeah, me using the Rift Herald recall there is by far the best play I could have made. And at this point, I definitely need to start looking towards getting my camps. Because it has been a while. Also, Dragon is spawning soon. And I can definitely look towards pressuring that. My axe barely doesn't hit this one. The Sona, like, stupidly followed over the wall. Maybe not stupidly. Could have also been a misclick. But getting a kill on the bot laner right there easily means we can take the next dragon. Now, dragon control is very, very important in a lot of solo queue games. If you can keep dragon pressure going and keep the dragon advantage, you will have a much, much higher chance of actually winning the game. So that's what I'm just going to opt for right here. Just keeping that dragon pressure going. And I still have some farming and catching up to do when it comes to that part. Now, I gotta use my Rift Herald quite soon here, so I'm just gonna pop it mid lane to get the mid lane turret lower and also get some pre plating still whilst I have time. The platings will go down so like soon ish, so I definitely need to make sure I use it. Now, here again, instead of clearing more of my camps, I wanna contest Carthus for his camps. So I'm just gonna take my blue, make sure that I will have enough, mo like, will have enough mana for the clear. And then I see his red spawning again. So what do you do? You have to pressure with Olaf. Olaf needs to play aggressive. Olaf needs to play forward. So you contest his camps. As you can see right here. I'm just going to opt to go for this red buff quite easily. It's not going to be a bad, like a big deal. We see the Galio here. We see the set and set dies. Now here initially what I like. We see the Karthus here. So we definitely like can pressure him off this camp or kill him right now which would have been better. Galio starts TPing here though, sadly. So this is a big, big problem for me that Galio TPs out because this means that the Z that's gonna obviously be running up at this point and the Karthus here will just like pincer me. And I think I'm already dead the moment Galio teleports away. Yeah, right there, the instant Z and I just die. So that's a bit, bit unfortunate there. I did, however, still get the Karthus ult and the Z ult and the Z ignite out of that. So that's at least something I suppose. Anyway, at this rate, I'm just going to go back and I need to... This is really the part where I have to clear my camps and I really need to do it quick as well. Do I... I see the Karthus walking here, actually. I thought I might be able to catch him if he goes to place a ward. Wasn't the case. As you can see, my camps are really easy to kill. You do have a really quick clear as Olaf anyway, but this is a little bit deceptive because those camps have been up for a little while, which means they are weaker compared to stronger cam like how strong the camps would have been. At this rate, I'm just going to stop Zed from recalling like twice, which allows my um, like my lanes to have a bit more pressure. I'm sure he wants to reset. Yeah, there he is. 1700 gold. He definitely wants to be looking to reset. So stopping him from recalling like twice is really good there. Now we see the Karthus top side here. So I'm instantly just going to, again, pressure the Karthus. It does not matter if I'm lower level or if I'm a little bit behind on Karthus, simply because I am Olaf. Uh, actually, I'm don't, actually, I'm ahead of Karthus by a bit, bit of gold and I have two dragons. But right here, as you can see, I can just easily run him down. And I could have done this the entire game. Now, he went to ult me there. I may have survived that ultimate damage right there. I don't think so, because I checked his items and he had double magic pen. Since I don't really have magic resist, I would have probably true damage through my HP. So I just wanted to take the plan to 
potentially get the HP back to survive his ultimate and then try to walk away. However, Zed catches me and I die. It's a bit unfortunate there. We see the Zed top lane, which is actually really good for us. Because this means that the these two are top right now. And this dragon should be another priority for me. So I'm definitely going to look towards this dragon. Because pressing for the dragon and pressing for the dragon's soul is really what's going to win us the game. Simply because they have Karthus. They have pretty good scaling in their team with Karthus and, Karthus and Tristana. So pressuring for a dragon, pressuring for a soul is going to be a win condition. And that's definitely what I'm going to do here. Now Ash goes in there. I'm just going to flash forward. But simply just to put out more damage a little bit faster. Some of you guys might think, well, that flash might be a little bit troll. And... Well, it could be troll, but the, the quicker Karthus dies here, like, I need to, to pressure this down. If he dies quite, like, in range of the dragon, that would have been a bigger problem for me, because then you might have been able to steal it with, like, a Q, or maybe an E, Q, whatever. He does have quite a lot of single target damage. Now, we see the Tristana here going for the Ash. Doesn't get it, because I landed the Axe and landed the Slow, which is good for me. Ash still dies, but that shutdown will help me out a lot. Now right here, I'm speed clearing through some camps. I definitely need to make sure that I keep my gold income going wherever I can. And right here, we need to get this Rift Herald right now because they do have a, quite a lot of wave clear. And if we can use this Rift Herald to potentially break open their base or something after a decent play, then that would be really, really good for us since we do have a bit of an issue pushing. So using the Rift Herald to our advantage is going to be a good play. Pick up the Rift Herald, and I do believe I have quite a fair amount of gold, so I definitely want to look towards backing soon. There we go. Uh, at this rate, you see me picking up the Bramble Vest. I'm just going to use this to get the healing reduction on their team, so Sona will not be able to heal all of them back up through team fights, And that's really what I'm going to just go with there. So they're probably going to hit me, and at this moment in time, the biggest threats are, of course, going to be the, for me at least, going to be the Zed. The Tristana and even the Set. The Karthus not so much because landing a Q from Karthus on Olaf is really, really difficult. Especially once Olaf starts ulting. So I'm not that worried about getting hit from his damage apart from maybe his ultimate. But So I'm just going to go and opt for some armor here. Now this armor really just is going to allow me to just go a lot more aggressive. I have the Cinderhawk as well so I'm going to be pretty healthy and pretty tanky this way. Picking up whatever farm I can, speed clearing through my jungle wherever I can. And just going to go and look for some catches with Ash Arrows. Now we pick up the set here, which is really good for us. And yeah, just getting some vision control around Baron. Getting some vision control going here. I initially wanted to go in here, but my t or in this situation, I wanted to just go in. I thought it might have been like just Garth's Triss, but then the moment Sona showed up, I was like, I might, maybe should not commit to this. Because I know Ash Arrow is down. And without that Ash Arrow, it's going to be a little bit of a problematic fight. So I'm just going to go and opt to base and play for towards the next dragon. Because you see on the map right now, this dragon is going to be spawning. So with this and pressuring for the soul is really what's going to be my main objective. So I definitely want to be ready for that. I'm just going to pick up the red buff. I walked over a pink there. I don't think I saw it, honestly. Alright, so this dragon is definitely something we just want to pressure for. The moment we get this dragon... Our position in this game is going to be super good because that means Dragon Soul, Ocean Dragon Soul is just amazing sustain wise, which means they're going to have like, they, they pretty much just lose the, the game the moment we pick up this dragon. And this is also why Dragon Control is going to win you so many games. And yeah, so we see at this moment they started it or someone started it. So it has a little bit of damage on it. Now it aggro towards me in a advantageous position for me as well. So all I really have to do right now is I'm just going to have to contest this. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a risky, more 50-50 smite. But with Olaf, you do have this as your advantage. Because you can do an extra 285 damage, true damage at the moment. Combine it with a 720 damage smite. And if you time it correctly, you can throw your axe on that as well. So, But usually, you want to throw your reckless swing with your smite at the same time. The way that works is you reckless swing first. Wait just a little bit, just a tiny amount, and then smite, and it's going to hit at the same time. Pretty much being impossible to outsmite for a Karthus. And that's really what I'm just going to bank and rely on in this situation right here. So I'm just going to go and play for this 50-50. I do not want to get CC'd either by like Sona ult or something, so I'm going to press my ultimate to make sure that doesn't happen. And as you can see right here, I like get my smite on it. 
and I get the Ocean Soul. Now, picking up the Ocean Soul pretty much instantly means that we win the game at this point. You just have to play it out properly. So you see this happen right here. I get the Ocean Soul. I win the Smite Battle against this guy. I kill Karthus, and I'm just going to charge with my ultimate to kill Sona real quick. And I'm just going to go and 1v1 the Trist. Now, one thing you want to do, or I guess not want to do with Olaf, is play it too aggressive at this rate. You don't have your ultimate anymore, so I'm definitely just waiting for my Axis. Waiting for the Ocean Soul that I just got to, to like regain my health with. And my I have red buff as well, so I'm going to have a lot of health sustain either way. So all I can have to do right now is just wait a little bit, get some HP back, and pretty much make it impossible for the Tristana to 1v1 me, or to kill me. So this is really good. I land a free axe, and the moment I land that axe, that means Tristana has to flash, because she just used a rocket jump, because there was absolutely no way she would have walked around like this in time without like maybe jumping or something. So that's really good there. And we pick up the Trist, and that's, yeah. This, this just puts us way back into the game, which is really, really good. Now we see the uh, set walking up here. Which is really good for me because this just straight up means he's going to be a free kill as well. He's maybe trying to push out one last wave or something. I don't know what he's exactly doing. But yeah, I see the uh, Zed, however, recalling there. So I instantly throw an axe. He was not paying too much attention, I don't think. He th I think he might have thought he was out. But like at the moment you, l I would have landed that thing, like that one axe. He was already guaranteed to die. So even if he would have reacted or not, if he would have ulted or flashed or whatever, I would have probably been able to catch up to him simply because of the approach velocity movement speed alongside the axis slows so i pick up the um z there which gives me another thousand gold shutdown but this also at the same time still means that with z and z dying they will be out of the picture completely and they are really high pressure slash damage sources from the enemy team so this instantly opens up or makes an opening for us to do the baron and that's what i'm just kind of straight up opt for now all that has to happen here is the Karthus needs to be zoned out because my I mean my smite's going to be up but it wasn't up yet but if we can kill the Karthus outside of the pit there's absolutely no chance we're ever going to lose this Baron and the Gallio realizes that and he just flashes over and goes for the play on that now I throw an extra X Ash throws her arrow and we get more damage into the Karthus there he dies we pick up a free Baron and this is really just game now this game has mainly been decided simply by the dragon control and also the pressure that I put down on the Karthus to prevent him from farming as much because if you let Karthus farm he would have had like 220 plus farm at this point in the game and he would have been like level 16 pretty much impossible to deal with and that's definitely not ideal. Now at this point I finish off the thorn mill I get a spirit visage and I'm pretty much unkillable to their entire team. I'll have a lot of sustain from Spirit Visits additionally, and there, yeah, at this rate, I'm just gonna charge in. We have Ocean Soul. We don't have to be worried. Set now gets caught again, which is really good for us there. And we just have to kind of, I mean, at this point, I just literally just have to run it down. They have nothing to stop me because I'm Olaf. I cannot be stopped. They're pretty squishy as well. Like Karthus, Sona, Trist, and Zed really are not gonna survive much. So I'm just gonna go in, land the axe. Get the move speed from approach and then just start ulting to make sure that it do not get slowed or Sona ulted and I just run the Karthus down. Getting the Karthus down and out of the fight like that on the side is going to be really good. Of course we're going to tank an ultimate from him but our Ocean Soul is going to make sure that we can easily sustain through that no problem. We also still have Baron so with him dying right there and it's pretty much just going to mean GG and it's game over because we can just finish the push right now. This fight happens, as you can see, with Ocean Soul, with the sustain and me being very, very tanky. There's absolutely no chance I'm ever dying again. And we end out the game. So this game really... The way Olaf is played is playing that pressure. I was pressuring the Karthus down. It doesn't have to be Karthus. It can be really any other jungler. Because every single jungler really has a problem with Olaf. Unless the jungler has like a range advantage or maybe like a kite advantage on Olaf which makes it really difficult for him to get him like get to you and kill you really that's the only type of jungler that's good but usually like Karthus is any tanks really um just like quite squishy champions will lose to Olaf will lose to the pressure you have and also the jungle player speed you have so barring the early game I had I recovered from that by ganking like smart ganking really identify your lanes and then like just playing for dragon pressure dragon is what won me this game guaranteed 
playing around with that dragon pressure is definitely the biggest play here and yeah that's pretty much been it for the olaf guide guys if you guys have enjoyed this video please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below and yeah see you guys in the next video bye